All right. Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome again to Solvers of All Your Problems, Volunteers. Uh, of course, this is a little tongue in cheek, a little bit of a joke. We don't think volunteers are going to solve all your problems, but this was sort of our frame of reference and our little hook for you today to um, just start to think a little bit more about how volunteers could really make a big difference in your classrooms. Um, excited to be here. I know it's like very much at the end of the day. Usually on a normal Friday, I'm like, oh, how can I like be productive between, you know, two and three on a Friday afternoon? So um, I think we're all going to feel um, pretty accomplished by the end of the session. Um, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to our session. And today we're going to be um, calling ourselves facilitators. Um, my name is Sophie uh, Fawn. I'm the volunteer outreach and coordinator here. And I also overlook um, the hotline at Literacy Minnesota. Um, and you can ask me anything from volunteer recruitment or volunteer postings or your volunteer needs and how to recruit more volunteers for your programs to just general information about the hotline and um, how to go about in getting um, students to contact you for more information. All right. I'm excited to be here with Sophie. I'm glad she's presenting with me. Um, my name is Megan Boyle. I'm the tutor training coordinator with uh, at Literacy Minnesota. And you can ask me about uh, volunteer training requirements. So our four and 12 hour training requirements um, are offerings. So that includes our in-person and online offerings um, and our recordings. And you can also, um, ask me about any of our customized trainings. So if you have like a group of 10 or 12 volunteers at your site and you wanna have us um, either do something virtually or in person, you can ask me about that. And as Sophie mentioned, we're thinking of ourselves as facilitators today. We want to give you some time to um, think and brainstorm and do an activity a little bit later. And I'll tell you more about that shortly. Um, so our objectives are for you to see volunteer tasks as solutions to classroom problems. And um, we'll do this through looking at a few real life examples um, from my own experience. Um, I forgot to mention a lot of my time with Literacy Minnesota was at, as a beginning literacy and beginning English teacher. Um, so we'll get some um, examples that came from our open door learning centers. So that'll help get the juices flowing. And then we also have this very old dusty list um, of that is unorganized and it's just a list of all the tasks that volunteers can do. And so later we're going to ask you to look at that list, categorize it and add to it. Um, and that's a way for you to kind of be reminded of what uh, uh, volunteers can do and maybe get a little inspiration. And the other thing that has sort of changed, of course, since we wrote that list some years ago is that we have now a lot of online and hybrid classes. And so we want to add to that list to reflect those contexts. So we'll do that as well. And then we also just hope that you're going to feel energized to engage new volunteers in new ways. And um, we'll do that through some talk with your colleagues. So it looks like you are ready to unmute. Um, your poll. <laughs> I am on mute. Um, <laughs> technical difficulties on our end. Um, but uh, so our next um, thing of um, activity, first activity is our poll. So if Susan or Christine can add the link to There we go. Just launched um, it. Everybody yep. should be seeing it on their screen. Let me or Christine know if you're not. Okay, and then this is just the different type of classes that your volunteer could work in or the classroom type of um, classrooms that you offer at your program. 
Um, it's in person, online, hybrid, and applicable, which means anyone who is not working directly um, with volunteers that are here today. So it's just a quick poll to see where everyone's at um, with working with volunteers and how we can use this to help you look for what you're looking for. And it looks like we've got 10 of 14 participating. I think we'll just give you another moment to respond. If you haven't already, we'd love to hear from everyone. But um, Sophie, are you seeing those results? Do you want to talk through those a little yes. bit? Okay. Okay. So um, we have 14. So, okay. So in person um, is nine out of 11. Um, and that's would be the most, um, so it's 82% of you that took the poll. And then online is 18. Um, which is two out of 11, and then hybrid is one, and also someone who's not directly working with volunteers, so one. I am I'm, I'm interested and maybe a little surprised to see that such a large uh, majority of you are in person, um, but we do have a few folks online and hybrid. And so we are going to add to those lists that list later for online and hybrid options um, for tasks for volunteers. All right, so we're going to warm up with a brief uh, just chat box prompt. And um, it's just uh, you know, what problems do you or your students have in your classroom now or in the past? Thanks for getting us started, Peter. Sorry, Sophie. Did you want to talk through some of those chat responses? Yeah, I, can, I, can I, I stole this slide from you. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's just fine. That's why we have two people. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay, so Peter says one is late arrival. And then Karen said, consist um, attendance making make moving forward in lessons difficult. And then Megan Campbell said, multiple levels and different curriculum. Attendance from Stephanie. And then Ruth said, wide range of level in one class. So there's a range of different problems. Yes. And this one, you know, the multi-level class is so common. You know, we hear that a lot, of course, and, and, and people are arriving late. Yes. So true. Yep. Yes. Great. Okay. So as we think about those, those problems or an, and additional problems, just keep those in mind and we'll think about how we can match up some of those, um, problems with some solutions provided by some volunteer tasks. All right, so um, is it my turn? I'm doing a you bad job it. of, of okay. <laughs> checking to see if it's my turn. You can take it. <laughs> yes, this one's mine. Okay, so as a lot of you mentioned, the uh, multi-level class. So um, a solution, of course, for a multi-level class is that um, the volunteer can work with the higher level students on a routine. Um, and I certainly had this problem myself when I was teaching a beginning literacy class. I had learners who were 
still learning the alphabet, learning consonant and uh, short vowel sounds, while others were like the ones in this picture ready to read some short stories. And so I had this wonderful volunteer, Kay, come visit my class uh, once a week. And she worked through um, a series of activities with them. And it was the same series of activities, but it was on a different story. I can't remember if I did it. I might have had her do it for two weeks or even three or four weeks, the same one uh, once a week with these learners. And, um, and then we would move on to a new story. And these stories came from the um, pre-beginning curriculum from Literacy Minnesota, the old one. And the activities are actually from the literacy workstations. Um, and this is a great resource. It's, a, it's like a, some supplementary activities that go along with that pre-beginning uh, curriculum that you know, I was able to write up a set of instructions for Kay, and she took students through the same series of activities each week. And so it was nice and predictable for her and predictable for the learners and um, easy for them to go through. But it stayed interesting because, of course, the stories changed periodically. So, um, uh, you know, of course, you might not be having a problem with a beginning literacy class, and you might not be able to use this particular routine, but um, just wondering if you could reply in the chat, uh, what are some routines that you could train a volunteer to lead so that then you could work with a, another level of students? I was always, when Kay was doing this with the higher level students, I was working with the, the lower level students on the alphabet at that point. Uh, we have uh, Fonda from the last uh, slide said that county jail correction setting. So incarceration, very unpredictable, segregation of groups by sex level of housing, varying level within groups and jail admin not supportive mm. of volunteers coming into the jail. Mm. Yeah. Peter is just so quick. Mm -hmm. So it's the first one. So Peter said um, actually to have some online element, a warm up discussion in school log and could have a moderator ask people questions every week. Great. Um, do people have any other routines that they think they could pass off to a volunteer, which might allow them to work um, with another level of students in a multi-level class? All right. Oh, thanks, Susan. So I had volunteers lead the weekly spelling or vocab test. Yes, I had a I had a volunteer who led dicta dictation for me every week. That might have been an opportunity for me to work with some a different level of students while she did that dictation. OK, having students read aloud. And Karen, I have not done this, but I have seen it done in a math class using a volunteer to correct homework and go through answers one-on-one uh, -on -one with students mm. who did not get the correct answers. Okay. Yes, or even, even flipping that a little bit, maybe having the volunteer do some other type of all class routine and maybe the, the teacher who might be able to think a little bit more um, spontaneously to, to explain all those different, um, what might have gone wrong with the homework. Um, that might be a way to do it too. All right, well, I, I invite you to keep thinking about, hmm, what is something that I'm doing 
with my students all the time, some type of routine that um, I could pass off to a volunteer, which might allow me to work with another level of students within the class. All right, I'll begin this one, Sophie. So, so another problem that um, we might have in classes is that there are not enough subs. Um, and so people have trouble being able to take vacation or time off. Um, so one thing you can have volunteers do is to learn to lead classes um, a little by little. So they might learn to do each to lead each part of your class um, little by little so that they could eventually become a sub. Uh, we, we had this, uh, you know, we had, when I was um, at Open Door Arlington Hills in East St. Paul, our very whiz of a coordinator, Mary Zamacona, she said, hmm, we, we just don't have enough subs for all these staff meetings that we have to do every Friday. Let's groom our volunteers who are always already here. And they, they know the place, they know so much, um, they would make great, or great subs. So because, you know, they know the site, they know the level and the materials, they know the students, most importantly, perhaps, and again, they know those routines. So um, they, they can make wonderful subs. Um, I will say, of course, this isn't for every volunteer. Not every volunteer is going to be comfortable leading a class, but you might have some that, uh, that might be able to do that. So do any of you have volunteers who might want to sub or you're already doing this and, and it's been working okay for you? All right, Karen says, I encourage volunteers to get their short-term licenses if they can. It has built up our sub pool. That's great. Well, and in some organizations like uh, Literacy Minnesota, you know, the, the CBOs, there's no license or, um, you know, master's degree required for subbing. Um, so that might be the case if some of you are working in a CBO. I think volunteers, teachers who take our 12 hour training would be great additions to the sub pool mm -hmm. that we have with Literacy Minnesota. Oopsie door. Okay. Um, this is um, our next problem to solve, and that is our need for one on one help for um, classroom activities. Um, so, volunteers can be great to helping you with individual help with students learning if someone is um, behind on their work or they're coming in late or if they had missed some classes um, your volunteers can help them individual one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. and for this instance um this one is um they can help learners with digital literacy and then encourage them to and motivate them in their learning. Um, this is one of our um, open door learnings. Mohammed Mohammed was um, a volunteer at our Lakeside, Lake Street um, open door. And he's now a part time staff here with literacy Minnesota, but he would um, come around and help student with um, additional help with um, computer skills. And it was also great that he was um, a Somali speaker because that was the demographic of that area. Yeah, great. And I see Fonda's question here. So um, they're new to adult ed um, in corrections. Um, gosh, you know, if you want to email me, I'm sure I could provide you with um, a follow of an example volunteer job description if you'd like. 
Um, I think that you could say in your job description that there are administrative tasks that need to be done. And I think that a lot of volunteers are quite happy to do those sorts of things. Um, they want to get into the classroom. They want to um, be with learners, but they don't necessarily want to take on a, a teaching or leadership role. And so they might be really happy to do some of those tasks that you've listed there. Oh, Sufi, you're on mute. Oh, okay. So volunteers are not just problem solvers. They're also individuals um, and they come with us with a lot of passion and talents and um, different expertise. Um, this is one of our many great volunteer. Um, she was um, a volunteer at one of Megan's class in one of Megan's class and she would um, come with um, this was an activity that she did with the class on how to make different flowers um, and it was an activity that encouraged and it brought um, an extra flair to the classroom and engage in a different way to engage students and learners yeah so yeah I'm sure folks have had this experience where learners or sorry volunteers want to bring in sort of their talents and interests and I think that's great too so we don't we're not just thinking about them as problem solvers but they're um, they can offer some really uh, fun and interesting activities as well so the next thing we're going to do is get set up for this uh, our main activity where you're going to um, see a long list of volunteer tasks that will help spark some uh, ideas for how volunteers could help you solve some of your classroom problems and we're going to add to it so here is this list um, and it, it's so old it has our old name and logo on it and it has about 80 tasks and it is not uh, organized um, in any type of way. So we're going to do an activity where you're going to uh, look at this list and categorize it and add to it. So the purpose of the activity, again, is to be reminded of all those tasks that volunteers can do um, and then add to that list and especially those online and hybrid activities for volunteers. And then we'll invite you to also brainstorm with your group to think of ways that volunteers could help you solve your classroom problems. So I'm going to go through the steps of this activity. And so I there is a little bit of like tech work to it. And so I'm going to ask for your attention here. And then just also say that because you have the ability to share your screen in your breakout room, you really only need one person who feels comfortable doing the copying and pasting and, and moving the um, tasks around in the Google spreadsheet that we're going to use. So um, hopefully nobody's sweating the tech uh, aspect of this activity. So what you'll do is you're going to read through the tasks on the all tasks tab of the spreadsheet. And then you're going to put the tasks that correspond with your assigned room on the corresponding tab. So when you get in your breakout room, it might say in the upper left hand corner, um, reading and writing. So then you're going to look at your at the list of all the tasks, find the reading and writing ones and put those in the reading and writing tab. This will be really clearer when I show you the spreadsheet, but I want you to get a basic idea of what we're doing first. And then, of course, you're going to add additional tasks to your assigned tab after you've pulled all the ones that are with your category, like reading and writing, for example. And then we're going to invite everyone to add additional tasks to the online, hybrid, and outside of the box tabs. And that outside of the box tab is those things like making um, paper flowers, um, those sorts of things that are not exactly ones that we always think of right away as volunteer tasks. And then, of course, we'd like you to discuss with your group um, what problems. Um, 
in your classroom could you solve with the help of a volunteer doing one of these tasks? So that's what we're, what we're aiming to do here. So um, this is that spreadsheet that I was referring to. All of the tasks are on this tab. So again, if you are in the room that is assigned reading and writing, you will look for the reading and writing tasks on this tab. So here's one, read to student for fluency model. So you can, you can copy and paste however you uh, want to. So that could be reading it and retyping it, or you can do control copy, control V, or edit copy, okay? So whatever you're comfortable with or whoever is gonna do this part of the task in the um, breakout room for you. So I'm gonna do um, edit, copy, you can also cut or copy. And then I'm gonna go to reading and writing and then put that there. And I'm gonna go edit, paste, all right? And then um, please note that there is um, the online and hybrid tabs at the bottom of the screen, and then the outside of the box tab at the bottom of the screen as well. So um, Sophie, could you copy and paste the instructions into the chat? Hopefully those will, they'll, those will follow people into the breakout room. But um, we'll just put these instructions on the screen one more time and just let us know if you have any questions. Oh, thanks, Christine. Christine got the instructions in there for us. And then Sophie and I are gonna come around and visit your breakout rooms just to make sure everything's going smoothly and if you have any questions. Have we, have we put the link for the spreadsheet in there yet in the chat? No, not yet. Oh, Thank you, Christine. That one. Christine got it. Thanks, Christine. So, um, so and just the, the the you know doing this work on the spreadsheet is meant to be just um, a way to help you engage with these tasks and spark some ideas. And so the most important part is the discussion. So um, you know use this time uh, with your group as you wish, and um, please don't worry if you feel like you're not going to be able to finish the task. That's okay. Um, yes, we are going, let's see, we're getting close to the end of our time. Let's do, let's do 12 minutes in the breakout rooms. So we'll just have a few minutes at the end to wrap up. So 12 minutes in the breakout room, please. And then I think we're ready to send everybody off. I will do 12 minutes with a 60 second timer and um, I'm opening the rooms now. Perfect. I already paused it. Oh, you already did. Yep, it was on my notes of things to do for me. You did, and so I restarted it. Mm -hmm. Top, I'm I'm double clicking on you here. <laughs> you want me to pause it again? Yes. Everybody. We are people are coming back from breakouts. Uh, some folks are still there. Oh, now everyone's back. So just a reminder to turn off your camera as you come back. And um just we just have a couple minutes left if anyone would like to unmute to speak or put something in the chat something you were reminded of uh, a problem that was solved or a new idea or inspiration that you got from reviewing that list uh, and from talking to your colleagues And as people are maybe composing something for the chat or working up the courage to talk to us, we're, we're, we're a small group, you know, you can unmute to speak. Um, I will organize that list and uh, can finish organizing it. I saw you got a pretty good dent in that and make it a part of our the participant materials, um, hopefully by the end of Monday. All right, thanks, Peter. So the hot seat.
Sorry, Rosemary, what do you mean? It myself. It, it was just, there were three of us and all of us were participating that doesn't always happen. So I'm, <laughs> I'm just, this was just, it was just good. Oh, <laughs> good. Thanks, Rosemary. That's yeah. because you were all, you're all stars, you know, oh, you, yes, you guys in sure. the group were stars. Yeah, for sure. Yes. I'm glad that it, you know, maybe reminded you of some things and got the juices flowing a little bit. Um, we'll continue to watch the chat. Uh, if anybody wants to add anything and we'll just say thank you. And uh, Susan, did you wanna let people know what's next for them? Sure, so this is the last concurrent session of the day. Um, so please do remember to fill out your um, conference evaluation so that you can um, receive your CEUs. And um, there is still um, one event happening yet this afternoon and that is the affinity groups. Um, I think there are a couple of affinity, affinity groups meeting this afternoon starting at 315 and those are on the flyer, which we can put in the chat for you. Um, but if you're not going to an affinity group, you can um, you can sign off for the conference for the day and uh, have a wonderful rest of your Friday and a great weekend. Thank you, Susan. Thanks, Christine, for supporting us. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Christine. And thank you, everyone, for joining us today. Oh, and I should say that the evaluation is on the flyer, along with all the links for all the Zooms. <laughs>